Hello everybody, this is Grant, your friendly OpenShift developer evangelist. I'm coming at you today from Tornado Headquarters in North Carolina. So what I mean by that, there is actually tornadoes going on outside right now, so you may be able to hear the, uh, the wind in the background. But today, and I just wanted to take a few minutes late in the afternoon, it's about 4 o'clock, to show you guys uh, another video of some of the awesome stuff we've been working on with our new version of our container application platform called OpenShift. Today I'm going to give a shout out to all the PHP developers out there and show how you can get instant gratification with your PHP projects deployed to Docker containers orchestrated with Kubernetes, all using the OpenShift platform. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be using the OpenShift all-in-one image, which is always the latest and greatest upstream version of the open source project. If you don't have it yet, don't worry. All you need to do is go to openshift.org slash VM, and this gives you the instructions to download and run the all-in-one image. The only requirements is that you have Vagrant and VirtualBox installed. Now I already have this running, so let's skip this and go ahead and log in. I'm going to log into the platform as my user here. And I'm going to go ahead and remember the password. Why not? It's my local OpenShift environment. Now as a PHP developer, the first thing I want to do is create a new project. And today's video, we're going to be showing Code Igniter and how you can save your changes and have them automatically show up inside of your Docker container. Now this is going to be the same for any framework that you use, but I just created a base uh, GitHub repository with the latest and greatest Code Igniter framework. So I'm going to call this Code Igniter. And the display name is Code Igniter. If I can spell it right, project. And we're not even going to give it a description. We're just going to click on create here. Now that we have a project, we need to decide what type of containers that we want to run that make up our application. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select PHP 5.6, and I'm going to call this my CI PHP. And now it's asking for a Git repository URL. So let me hop on over to GitHub real quick. <coughs> And go to slash gshipley. That's my GitHub account. I'm going to click on my repository. So I just created this brand new CI OpenShift uh, repository. I'm going to click on that. You're probably wondering uh, what's in this uh, uh, repository. The only thing that's in here is I initted an empty repository. I downloaded the latest version of Code Igniter and copied it in. So I haven't done any other modifications other than this simple readme file here. So what I want to do is grab the uh, repo URL. I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard, go back over to my OpenShift console, paste that in and click on create. So what's actually happening under the covers here is that OpenShift is using our open source project called source to image that's going to take a base PHP 5.6 Docker image. It's then going to take that GitHub repository with the PHP source code in it, and it's going to run a build of that source code and then create a new Docker image on the fly that contains the PHP runtime as well as your source code. So let's go ahead and go to our PHP uh, project overview here. We have a build that's running. So that's interesting. Let's take a look at that. All right, we can see the build is actually running. And what's interesting about this particular build is CodeIgniter uses Composer for dependency management. And just to illustrate the beauty of source to image you can see that source to image actually recognizes that for PHP and installs those dependencies. Now this will take a couple minutes, like I said, while it's building this Docker container on the fly. It looks like the container has been built now and it's pushing the image up to the internal OpenShift registry. Okay, it looks like our image has been successfully pushed now. And so now that that image is in the Docker registry running inside of OpenShift, OpenShift, the platform, will then spin up that container for us. So let's go back to the overview. And we can see that we have one pod running now. So let's click on the exposed URL and just take a look at what the application looks like. Now, if you're familiar with Code Igniter, you know this is just the standard welcome page. Okay, so let's go back to the console and then let's look at how we're going to start developing against this project.
we're actually going to be using the Eclipse PHP development environment called PDT. Now if you're a NetBeans or IntelliJ user, this process will work exactly the same for you. So let's go ahead and go over to our Eclipse environment. You can see I just have an empty workspace here. I don't have a project yet. So let's go ahead and create one. I'm going to say New Project and I'm going to select PHP Project. And I'm going to give my project a name and I'm just going to call it my Code Igniter since we're working with the Code Igniter Model View Controller Framework. Then I'm going to select to create a project at an existing location. And this is where I'm just going to browse to my Git uh, source repo that I have cloned locally. And it just pops up automatically for me there. So I'm going to click open. And we're using PHP 5.6. All good there. Uh, we, Yeah, let's go ahead and enable JavaScript. We're just going to click uh, finish there. And here we can see that we have that application cloned down, this basic one. So we can look at the controller here, which is, if you're familiar with Code Igniter, this is what loads that first page here. It loads the welcome message, which is actually a view. Now, Code Igniter is a model view controller framework, so let's go into view, and here's the welcome message, okay? So if we scroll down, we can see welcome to Code Igniter with an exclamation point. If we pop back over to our console, click on the link here, this is what's driving this message right here and that's what we want to change so let's close a couple of these tabs here go back to our clips so when I said instant gratification what I want to do is set up a clip so anytime I make a change those source files change changes are also sent over to the docker container so I can actually use OpenShift as a pure development platform without having to install Apache and and PHP and MySQL and MongoDB, Postgres, whatever your stack includes, you can just develop directly against the, the cloud platform here. And so how do we do that? What we want to do is click on our project and right click on it and go to properties. And we want to create a new builder. Okay, and so I'm going to select builders and I'm going to click on new. And we're going to want to run an external program. Click on OK there. Let me move the box down for you. And we want to give the builder a name. So we're just going to call this rsync to OpenShift. And then the location is the location of the OC command line tool. So what I'm going to do is just pop open my terminal here real quick and type which OC to get the location of my OC tool. And I'm going to copy that and paste that in here. And then for working directory, we want this to be our project directory. So I'm just going to say browse file system and it's smart enough to drop me there by default. And then for the arguments, these are the arguments we're going to pass to OC. I just want to say rsync dot space, which is uh, dot is represents the current working directory that we just defined. And we want to sync it to a specific container. So we have to get that containers name. So let's pop back over to the web console real quick click on our pods here and this is our container name so I'm just gonna copy this to my clipboard hop back over to my Eclipse environment paste that in and then I'm gonna do a colon and then we need to specify the directory that we want to uh, push our code to and that's gonna be opt apt root slash source so that is slash opt slash app dash root slash source src and that's all there is to it i'm gonna click apply on that click ok and we actually i don't actually want all of these other builders to run um, you can leave them on if you want but i'm just gonna select them here um, and click ok so let's go ahead and make a change here this is the line we want to change oh i forgot one thing uh, let's go back into our builder so i'm going to go back into properties select builders, select this rsync to OpenShift, click edit and let me move this down again if you click on build options the true magic um, happens by selecting all of these boxes and that will ensure anytime we click on save on a file that that command will run so I'll click OK apply that click OK so now let's make the change so we can say welcome to code igniter running inside of a docker based container on OpenShift 3 and some exclamation points there. So watch this down here in the console when I click the save button we're gonna see that it's gonna rsync that file over. There we go. One file changed welcome message.php. If we pop over to our browser again and we refresh this app boom 
there it is. Bob's your uncle. That's fantastic stuff. So now you have full control over your development environment and you can use OpenShift and Docker-based containers as your true development environment. And you don't have to install all of this stuff on your local machine. Just use OpenShift for it. So let's go back to the IDE again real quick. And a few things I do want to point out here, okay? A couple of gotchas that you may run into. This only works for single container-based applications, okay? So if you scale up to one or two pods, uh, or sorry, if you scale up to four, five, six pods, it's only going to change on the one pod that we specified in the rsync command. Now that's okay, right, because... Um, for development, you can develop against a single container uh, for rapid application development. Now, the other gotcha is when I'm making changes in this container, if the container goes away, I'm going to have to update my configuration. And by that, I mean anytime this container goes down and comes back, it's going to get a different ID. So here it's 0997J. So let me illustrate this real quick. Let me go back to the overview. Let me scale this down. So I'm going to scale this down to zero containers. And then let me scale it back up to one. And you'll see that a new container was created. Now it's PUN4E. So what, all you need to do is you decide to do this for whatever reason is get this new container name, copy that, hop over to your Eclipse environment and just update that builder, right? It just takes a second and then, you know, I'm doing it right now. That's how quick it is. And I'm just going to replace this 0977J with the current one and done. Now I'm, I'm back up and, and running. Okay, it synced everything over again. The other gotcha is that you're still going to want to use Git just like you did. Um, so for example, here's my changes that should be running in my container because I just synced it back over again. So if I go to overview and click on that, we can see that it changed, but this is not in my Git repository. So what you wanna do as a developer is just your normal workflow. You wanna code, iterate, get a feature working. And then at the end of the day, when your feature is working, you wanna come into your project here and you can do a Git status and we should see uh, this file has changed, the welcome message, and then you'd want to commit that up to your repository. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just showing you how you can quickly use an interpreted language on OpenShift for instant development gratification. Thanks a lot. Bye.